Breaking news. This is hot off the scientific presses. PMR research has just been published that might change a lot of things. This might help answer the question of why some people with PMR are able to go into remission faster than other people. Researchers have uncovered a surprising factor that could make all the difference and it's something you might not expect. So what is PMR? PMR stands for polymyalgia rheumatica and it's a condition that primarily affects people older than 50, usually in their 70s or 80s, who are of Caucasian European descent, where there's dramatic pain in the shoulder or hip area that comes on suddenly and pretty much only responds to prednisone. It causes stiffness, fatigue, aching in the shoulders, neck, and hip areas making it impossible to drink a cup of water or for a woman to latch her own bra. And while prednisone is typically the go-to and sometimes only treatment for PMR, new research has uncovered a surprising factor that might predict remission. And it has nothing to do with steroids like prednisone. And that's saying something because I'm Dr. Megan, the prednisone pharmacist. I'm a board certified doctor of pharmacy and third generation pharmacist. So what did this study look at? Well, the researchers found 29 people with PMR who definitely did not have another disease that's really closely related called GCA or giant cell arteritis and had never taken something before. It didn't matter whether they had taken prednisone before, but there was something that they wanted to test for. They wanted to make sure that none of these people had ever been exposed to before. They followed these 29 PMR patients over 21 to 24 months, so around two years, and they checked for things like relapses. They tested their blood for the ESR, or erythrocyte sedimentation rate, and CRP, C-reactive protein, both signs of inflammation and the disease flaring. And then this is the thing they tested that nobody's really looked at before, and it was vitamin D levels. The 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels in the blood was the new thing that this study looked at. And then they compared all of these blood levels to normal people of the same age who had the same blood tests taken. So they were on average about 70 years old, both the PMR group and the otherwise healthy individuals, and they compared them. And one thing they noticed right off the bat was that the vitamin D levels in the blood in the normally healthy people was the same as in the people who have PMR. So it's a function of age that the typical person in their 70s usually has low vitamin D levels. Somewhere around 20 to 22 nanograms per mil was the normal level in both the normal and the PMR patients. So vitamin D wasn't a predictor of getting PMR. What they did next though is where the big difference comes in. So they decided to supplement vitamin D to get to a goal of more than 40 on their blood test. And they were starting out at around 20. So the goal was to basically double or even triple or quadruple that number. Being less than 100 and greater than 40 was essentially the goal. It's not safe to be above 100, but in this situation, their goal was to be above 40, to be kind of closer to the normal range of vitamin D for health. And so they took different forms of vitamin D, usually cholecalciferol, which is vitamin D3, and a few people did calcitriol. Some of them supplemented daily, some of them supplemented weekly, and a few supplemented monthly. No matter what, the goal was to get greater than 40 on the blood test. Check out this chart. The first line in blue shows the vitamin D levels. The next line in red shows the ESR, and below that is the CRP. These are both indicators of inflammation in the blood. You can see as the blue line goes up, that's the vitamin D level, that the inflammation is going down. Wow, what a cool correlation showing that the blood level of vitamin D is really important to get the disease inflammation into remission. 
This next chart shows the clinical response at three months. On the left side, you see the change in the vitamin D levels. And on the bottom, you see whether a person has persistent disease or is in remission. And you can see a very, all that red shows just a tiny change in vitamin D. All of those in green show a bigger change with some even up to 22. That was the mean, was 22 nanograms per milliliter increase in vitamin D levels. And what does that really mean? In the next chart over, you can see the delta vitamin D in green is showing that you have a three times almost greater chance of going into remission, 2.89, if you have a change in vitamin D at three months compared to those other things that are prednisone. The study revealed that an increase in vitamin D levels after just three months of supplementation was the strongest independent predictor of remission, even when accounting for prednisone use. It was a nearly a three times greater chance of being in remission. What's also interesting when it comes to the prednisone is what they said. The baseline prednisone intake were identified as significant independent factors negatively associated with the 25 hydroxy vitamin D serum concentrations. The amount of prednisone a person had taken before they started this study was a predictor for having low vitamin D. Could it be that the prednisone is causing the low vitamin D? Good question. And other studies have proven that prednisone causes low vitamin D. It's also causing low calcium and other nutrients. All of these low nutrients combine not just to worsen your chance for remission, worsen your disease, but also worsen your chance for side effects from the drug. Things like bone loss, broken bones, loss of height. I'm going to read this from another study. It said, a UK-based database study of 15,000 individuals reported fracture rates, that's broken bones, 63% and 67% higher for PMR and GCA respectively, with less than 13% of patients receiving bisphosphonates. That's a type of drug that prevents osteoporosis fractures. Another set of articles using the same data set looked at 5,000 people with GCA and demonstrated incidence rate of ratios of 2.4 for osteoporosis and 1.4 for fracture in GCA. So you have a 2.4 times greater risk for osteoporosis and 1. times greater risk for a broken bone if you have GCA. And they go on to conclude, a basic tenant of the management strategy when considering glucocorticoid-induced osteoporosis is that it is far easier to prevent bone loss in the first place than it is to rebuild it following such loss. So both this study I've been announcing that is so exciting and brand new and this study talking about the risk for osteoporosis are concluding the same thing, that getting your vitamin D calcium levels into a healthy range is more likely in this first study to get you into remission and the second study to prevent osteoporosis. We'd rather prevent the osteoporosis than to have already suffered a loss and be unable to inch back up because this bone loss is permanent. There is no getting it back. Optimizing your vitamin D levels was strongly associated with remission, which could support better management of PMR. This might even allow for less steroid therapy prescribed by your doctor. If your disease is in remission, it's under better control with less reactive proteins, the ESR and the CRP, you might need less prednisone. Vitamin D may lead to a less need for prednisone use. So what should you do? Step one, get your vitamin D level checked. You can ask your doctor to prescribe it and have your insurance pay for it. Or if you'd rather rush and get the answer quickly, I have a vitamin D test available on my website. Second, start supplementation if needed. If you are up in the 50 to 70 range, maybe you don't need supplementation. But if you are not reaching the goal of this study, which was greater than 40, and you could see the trend of that blue line showed up to 80 was still safe and good keeping people in remission, then supplementation may be good for you. But it's individualized, right? Like you need to be getting this tested 
and getting the right dose of the vitamin D for you and your level of inflammation, your skin type, your ability to make vitamin D from sunlight, all of the factors that are involved in vitamin D are unique to you specifically. So get tested once, start supplementation, and get tested again to make sure that you are reaching your goals, that you're rapidly getting there, and be in close communication with your doctor to achieve these goals. If you want a really easy way to start out is to get Nutrinize Zone. This is designed with the calcium, vitamin D, and other nutrients that prednisone is stealing. Other nutrients that you need to support your bones, your metabolism, restful sleep, and keeping your inflammation under control. You can just get it at Nutrinize.com or click the link below. I invented it because I personally had to take prednisone and did not want to have to deal with my family history of osteoporosis. So I've got a morning bottle and a bedtime bottle. You take two in the morning and two at night, and this supports restful sleep. This supports a good, strong metabolism. And it's one month supply, all you need to start out with for your basic vitamin D supplementation. If you need more vitamin D based on your blood test, then I've got other vitamin D that I can recommend. So just click the link and it'll take you to a bundle of all of the things that I recommend. The vitamin D test, neutronized zone, other vitamin D supplementation that you can go for, and maybe other things that I'll throw in as a bonus. So check this out. Click the link below to get my bundle for people with PMR who need support with vitamin D. Signing off as Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist.